This video is best viewed in full screen mode and on YouTube that's this icon right here and if you have a high bandwidth connection uh, you also want to watch it in HD which is this icon right here. This video is designed to help you understand all aspects of the program in regards to this summary tab here. A uh, couple quick notes. Uh, if your only thing you're trying to get help on is to do with this actions grid and how to um, customize it, uh, there's a link on the screen now. You can click on it. It'll take you to a video specifically about the actions list. And that'll also show up at the end of this video. Uh, also, uh, archiving a record. Uh, there's a separate video for archiving the record and how that works. And I can click on the link here. Or again, that link will show up at the end of the video. As the name implies, the summary tab is a summary of all the information about your judgment all in one place. Uh, most of the information uh, here is pulled from other tabs. Uh, but we're going to go over this one thing at a time. First thing being the uh, next action. Uh, here you put in the date that you want to take your next action. And here you put in the description. And when this date comes about, uh, the system will put up a warning on this record. And if you go up here to the queries menu and you click on actions due, it'll uh, show you all the records where an action is due. So that's how you use that. Okay, here is where you have information on your judgment debtors. Uh, there's one row for each of up to three judgment debtors. And this information is pulled off the uh, JD and Contacts tab. And there's also a shortcut. If you click here, it'll take you right to the information on this judgment debtor. Uh, same here. It'll take you right to that tab. Okay, over here on the right, is information on uh, payments. Uh, first of all, there's this here, uh, whether or not your judgment debtor is on a payment plan. And this here is grayed out. You cannot check it yourself. It's an indicator of whether or not uh, the judgment debtor is on a payment plan. And uh, this comes directly from this right here. Uh, also, you have uh, some handy information about uh, when the last uh, bill was due, or last payment was due, if uh, they're on a payment plan. This here is last time you were paid, regardless if they're on a payment plan or not, just last time you received funds. Uh, how much that was last time you got uh, received funds. And this here is if they're on a payment plan, uh, when their next uh, due date is uh, for that payment. And this here is whether or not you've sent a, if they're on a payment plan, whether or not you've sent a bill out for this particular uh, due date. And all that information is pulled from the payments tab. Okay, now let's go over to this here. This is basically a summary of information about the judgment pulled from the judgment tab. Uh, there are four uh, tabs here. This one is for the original judgment. This one is for the first domesticated judgment, the second domesticated judgment, and the third domesticated judgment. Uh, these here are blank because uh, this particular sample we have here only has one domesticated judgment and it's in California. And all of this information here, these all these fields except for this one, all these here are pulled directly from this right here is just a copy of this information. Uh, and then the case numbers also shows up here, which comes from uh, this information right here. Um, also, uh, if you click here, of course, you get the information from the domesticated judgment. And you can either click on this tab to see it, or there's a little shortcut here. If you click that, it'll take you right to uh, the uh, judgment where it's pulling the summary information from. Uh, also, um, uh, if you click here, it brings up your account summary report. 
And if you want to know specifically how all this here comes about, uh, you want to watch the video on the Judgment tab. Uh, that is where this is all explained. Okay, over here uh, we have the ranking. And you can rank this video as hot, normal or, normal, or cold. It defaults to normal when you create a new record. But let's say there's one you want to pay particular attention to. Uh, you can just set that to hot. And then uh, what this allows you to do is you can come in here, for example, and you could sort. And by the way, you can sort and uh, search on any of these fields just by right-clicking on them. But we're going to sort by this record, uh, by this field here. And now, uh, if you notice this field as I go through the database, the hot ones are in the front, normal are uh, in the middle, and of course, if you go to the end, uh, that's where the cold ones are. So now let's go back to our uh, record we were looking at. Um, <clears throat> this here is the last time it was edited, last time you made any changes to the record. This here is your total expenses, and that is pulled from the expenses tab from this field here, and that is just a summary of this uh, amounts in this column here. And then uh, this brings us to the record ID field, and the main purpose of that is if you've uh, sorted these records off some other field and you want to get back to the or they were entered into the system, you can sort off this field here and uh, they'll get back in the original order. And just an FYI, whenever you open the database, uh, the records are default sorted by the record ID. And down here is your notes. There's a lot of room on the summary tab to put in notes. And <clears throat> Uh, just an FYI, if you ever see on any other tabs a text box like this and it doesn't have a label on it, uh, that means that it's there for notes. Uh, sometimes I just didn't want to waste the space that the label takes up uh, when you could be using that space for your notes. And uh, that's pretty much everything you want to know about the summary tab.